Thank you very much, Program Director. I think I'm, you can hear me without this thing, eh? Yeah. Quite comfortably, thank you. I'm very pleased to be here, thank you for the invitation. Um, just uh, to say to, to you, uh, it is, um, I feel so honored and great to speak in, also in front of a number of visitors. I believe from Port Elizabeth, the gentleman over there, some people from Pretoria, and so on. Um, ex Ketonian, <laughs> always a Ketonian. She can say whatever she wants. <laughs> she will stay a daughter of the Cape Flats. That was beautiful Afrikaans anyway. But, <laughs> but at uh, the end of the day, uh, also the community members. I was just talking earlier to Julia, and we share a couple of, of, of issues with each other. It's so important to draw community people in to make them part and partial of our initiatives, uh, our conservation and environment initiatives. Reason for that is um, what I share was a, were a kind of a little bit of to say to her, I'm not happy with one or two things. And it lets in with your experience in Ikuruleni with the mayor down there. But I think Cape Town is a little bit different. I think we do give you the necessary no, support. I, <laughs> <laughs> um, I think you won't find that problem with Stephen sitting there and with Julia here and with all the other staff of the city of Cape Town. We need to work together with each other. City of Cape Town cannot want to see to operate as an island on its own, and we need to take hands. Um, we don't have all the answers. We need partnerships, partnerships with other spheres of government and with people like you. So I, I, I want to use the opportunity up front to say to you thank you very much for what you guys are doing for the conservation and environment and also for the city of Cape Town as well. And carry our best wishes over to your peers up there in Johannesburg and Victoria as well. Um, but I were looking at your issue around striking off a balance between um, social issues between housing encroachments in conservation areas. And just this morning, I had a meeting with Premier Zilla about the very, very same thing, ongoing for the last couple of weeks, because what we see is that some of our parks, there's just more structures going up, just more people invading, and that sort of thing. We see what's, what Imizamu Yeti is looking like, what Ocean View is beginning to look like, what Hangberg is, is look like, and I'm not happy with what I've seen down here. Looking at, uh, yesterday I had a meeting with housing officials um, about um, a proposed housing development in this reserve, about 2,000 of them, and the housing officials just said to me yesterday, uh, looking at the amount of structures going up, were they talking about even more housing opportunities in the reserve? And I said, but then there's a red flag going up almost immediately, and we need to talk about that, and we need to see. Um, you, someone have said um, at the end of the day, um, looking at the fences, if we need to break fences down and that sort of thing, or what else we need to do. Sometimes we need to bring a fence up to say, uh, up till here and nothing more, and that sort of thing. And I said to Julie, but at the end of the day, we also rely on, on some support we get, not actually support, the advice we get from officials and sometimes the, the conservationists and environmentalists must also guide by saying but they believe politicians now need to step in and politicians need to give the word to say, let the fence go up. I don't mean a, a fence practically and that sort of thing, but to say we need to preserve, we need to protect and to say nothing more and that sort of thing. Otherwise, all, a lot of our beautiful conservation areas, environmentally sensitive areas, will be taken up by developments, if it is housing or commercial or whatever it might be. And the question is, can we really allow a thing like that to happen? And from my side as a politician and as a mayor of Cape Town, my answer to some of your concerns and some of your questions is no. But we need to talk about it. We need to get that necessary fine line, that necessary balance. What is it what you guys want? What is it? what we as politicians want. Sometimes we don't understand why you guys are doing things in a particular manner. Uh, but you need to guide and you need to talk straight with regard to what is your wishes and things like that as well. Or sometimes we as politicians tend to, tend to make a decision 
without knowing what you guys are thinking about mm -hmm. that. We sometimes see environmentalists as a, a little bit of as draconical, have no sense for the social and other needs of society as well. And you guys need to be aware of that. That is why we need to talk. And that is why we need to talk straight and share ideas. And I want to appeal to you guys, um, please do that. Um, we will never feel offended, maybe one or two, but not, <laughs> but, but definitely not the mayor of Cape Town. I like ideas and, and that sort of thing, and I like to make the correct decisions and um, integrated decisions, joint decisions and to everybody's benefit. And it is for that very reason that, and I want to get back to the developments, and, and I was very, very shocked yesterday, and even sitting with the Premier and, the, and, and her message were, why are we allowing between five to 10, 15 structures in our parks to go up on a day-to-day -day basis almost? Can we allow a thing like that to happen? And my answer is no, we can't allow that to happen. We need to do something about it. Uh, but at the end of the day, uh, we need to draw in other spheres of government to make them to understand why we want to do things in a particular manner. We need to get the communities involved, and that is why I'm so pleased to see such an awful lot of community leadership and uh, representatives here this afternoon. For them to hear the struggles we're facing, and also for them to take the messages back to their communities, also to make the communities to understand why government are doing things in a particular manner. I think by engaging more and more with each other, people will have the necessary understanding. And also for that very reason, looking at conservation and environmental issues within communities as, as well. I, I felt so good the other day going uh, to, to Park Hood, uh, the Lavender Hill area, Park Hood Retreat area, walking, having a walk about uh, to the flats and among the flats and that sort of thing. You get into some areas and the flats are so dirty, it is just papers and dirt and stuff lying around. And getting in that area and I said, what the devil is going on here? And the community was busy working. It's just buzzing, ladies and children and everybody with wheelbarrows and spades and that sort of thing and the shrubs and cactuses and whatever other plant species. They're busy planting and they green the whole flats area. And I stand on a distance and I took some pictures with my camera and I said to myself, but that is what must happen. Yeah. We need to bring conservation and we need to bring the environment right into our communities. Conservation and environment and biodiversity must not be a them kind of it must be a us kind of thing. What you feel, listening to all of your, you people down here, um, and, and don't see anything in what I'm going to say now, but to see the blooming passion in you. The blooming passion in you. That passion, we want that passion within our communities as well. But at the end of the day, sometimes a government can't do it alone. We can only create that necessary environment for you guys to do what you need to do, uh, but also to take it a little bit further. But at the end of the day, let us take our hands in this. If, even if I could get only this message across to you this afternoon. Because what I've seen in Lavendil, you know, I to feel so good and to say to myself, I want to launch more of those projects out of my office to take it to the communities, to my, myself, and to make it work. And it is for that very reason that I upcommand a number of officials in the city of Cape Town, Claire McKinnon and those guys and her team and others, the roads people, the housing people, and said, let us start with a dramatic mesh, cleaning, educational campaign across the city of Cape Town. Take it to all suburbs, to all areas. But the big thing were where to get the budget from. And that is always the issue in government. Uh, with everything you want to do, where will you find the necessary funds? Now, um, I, I need to say to you, when I put the plan together in front of the financial officials, and we could manage to get a budget created, and, and, and I felt so good for that, a couple of millions of rounds, and we are really going to do it. 